Um, well, I neglected to record some of this, but I'll give you a quick review. Um, the other day we were doing the boards that, um, we were doing the um, color testing, the finish color test. And I was using that maple board and you saw that one side was curly-ish and the other side was kind of plain. Well, after I think probably 20 or 30 attempts or 20, so 10 or 15 attempts or so, I, uh, I got my feel with the trans tint, but I didn't like what I ended up with at the end. It was just way too thick. It was almost as burgundy as this. So what I've done, I cut that board in half, that sample board in half, and then I resawed a bunch of thin, a bunch of thin pieces about a quarter inch or so um, out of it. And I think I got 10, I think I got 10 pieces. So that'll give me 20 faces I can experiment on and right now they've all been resawn and now I've run them through the drum sander my next task is I'm sanding them off with the orbital sander like I did before sanding them all flat or not necessarily flat but getting the burn marks out and just sanding them just getting them sanded is all so I'll uh, put you on some nice music here and you can you can sit through this <laughs> All right, so we've got a bunch of planks. So I took that board and I cut it into a bunch of pieces so that I could uh, do some tests. So I've got 10, 10 planks. Um, so that gives me two sides a piece, so 20, plank, 20 test subjects, and I may divide them in half, maybe. I haven't decided there yet, but. So there's five of them that are, they were on the plain sawn-ish plain-ish kind of not super heavy grain figure and just sort of mediocre grain. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to use those to see where I want my color to land, my red. Um, and then I'll, once I've got that, then I'll start working out, I think, not sure yet. I haven't really totally decided. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, so just experimenting. We'll see what I learn. But I've got 20 shots at it, and I think on the planar grained ones, I may split them in half, maybe, I don't know. Looks like I could do the figured ones in halves as well, but... Yeah, so we're going to figure out how to, how to make this curl pop, this quilted, this figure, jump at you as best I can. Um, so I'll bring you back when I've got sort of set up for that. Um, I'll stick with the airbrush, and I'm going to continue down the road of trial by spraying. Um, one of the one of the things I didn't like about the last sets of tests were it was a bit opaque, and I think that was just me being laying it on way too heavily. So I'm going to have to uh, try not to do that, and then we'll go through the. I'm going to also I think. Well, I'll go through the putting a top coat on it and everything because I need to know what it's going to look like before it goes on the guitar. Um, I'm also going to experiment a little bit with not just the die and some lacquer top coats. I'm going to try um, the die in some shellac because I have some. I don't have any. I don't have any lacquer I can put die into just yet. Um, but I will use some shellac because I think that'll will also help pop some of the grain as well. Um, so I'm going to do a few trials here and we'll see what happens. Um, I'll bring you back when I'm ready for that. All right, so we've got, <laughs> I've got a mess yet, but uh, I'm going to take my bench cover. Pay no attention to this. Actually, I'm going to talk about it because I just learned it and it might be useful information. So I just had to pick up some more denatured alcohol, and I learned, and some of you guys might already know this, but I learned, I kind of knew that not all were created equal, but I learned that this stuff is like half methanol, half ethanol, roughly, um, which means it's 
the methanol is not as good for shellac. It's not as it's just not as good of an alcohol. But it turns out this stuff, the green, the green, not planet killing stuff, is uh, like 90% ethanol, which is really decently pure ethanol, and it's kind of expensive. Less, it's more expensive than this, but it's less so than like medical grade or Everclear or you know pure grain alcohol type stuff. So I'm going to give this stuff a shot and see if I get any different results. I'm also going to uh, do my best to, um, I'm going to save what's left of this. There's about, oh, maybe another pint in here. Maybe. It's a couple of cups, two or three cups, maybe four cups. The, I, I'm, I'll save it for cleaning, cleaning the guns, cleaning the bottles and all that stuff. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit more methodical because when I was messing around with it last time, I was sort of haphazardly just guessing and not very methodical, not very controlled. So I ended up, you know, with some random unpredictable results. And I need it to be more predictable. So we're going to we're going to kind of use this as my mixing board here so I don't end up with a pink bench. It's not pink, by the way. It's light red. If you ever end up with a pink bench, that's your, that can be your defense. Um, so I'm going to start out... Uh, let's see. What am I going to start out doing? I think... I think I'd like to... Uh, start out with the dark stuff because I'm, I keep going back and forth whether to find the red first and then apply the dark stuff after and then put the red on top but every time you put the dark stuff on you put the red over the top of that it's going to change your red so I think it's going to be better to go the other way see if I can get some some dark uh, color to go on to this and give the grain as much of a chance to pop as possible a bit of a divot there. And so give it as much as it can. Give it as much help as I can for success. By, and find the dark. Find what works best for darkness f first. And then worry about finding the red after that. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with this figured stuff. And this is the thinnest of the figured stuff. So I suspect it's going to move on me. Um, and I'm going to do this a little better than I did the last time. First, I'm going to... I need another... I need another water, or another squeezy bottle here, because this one has the crappy stuff in it. Just dump this stuff out here. Definitely got some alcohol left in it because my fingers are cold. It's also very old alcohol, so I have had it for a while. So this should, that alone should increase my, improve my results quite a bit. Um, but I'm going to do this much more, uh, what's the word? I'm going to do this a bit more controlled, or at least somewhat more controlled if I can help it. So I'm just going to start with... Whoever designed these lids are a, a sadist. I don't have a way to open that. Not very strong. So this lid, gotta have a screwdriver to pop the cap. And then there's no air hole or breather hole for it, so you can't you can't uh, you can't get a you, you can't pour smoothly. So I'm gonna put it in this because it's going to see it flop all over the place. So I'm going to put it in my little water bottle, in my little squeeze bottle. Even if I could find a, a point, even that, it's just, yeah, there's no, there's no controlling it, which is fine. We'll stick with it like that. And then I'm going to put an ounce of it into my, and I need, a, I need to do one other thing, one lesson that I have, have to learn is to keep copious notes 
And uh, so I'm going to grab some paper to write my notes, to jot down some notes on. And we'll uh, bring you back when I'm ready for that. Okay, so notes I can take. Um, we're going to start out with a single... I'm going to use the other... Use the other bottle for that. Start out with a single ounce of alcohol. And this bottle's about an ounce. And then... And to which, uh, I will not, not add it here, I will add it here. It's a two ounce bottle, I don't want to use a full two ounces. And that'll do that. Now we're just going to do, I'm um, progressively increase my use, because my dye addings, because I'm not going to use much of it to do a half. Which reminds me, I am going to, I am going to split this thing in half. I'm going to use some narrower, narrower tape, though. And you know what? This does deem itself worthy of a piece of plastic. Let's go with. Let's go with. That piece right there will do. And, uh, yeah, I think this will. I think this will do the job nicely. Yeah, I just want to make sure I mask off the. Well, now I don't need the super thin tape, do I? Now I'll mask off one side, and it's it'll be a nice reusable masking. That I'll be able to do. There. Okay, so this will become, this one is side one, so we'll make a note. Now, I'm going to just do this literally, annoyingly, excruciatingly slowly, uh, one drop at a time. Um, I think, I think black. I think black is okay, but I think it's going to want to be somewhat red, but I'm going to start with just black, and I'm literally one drop. There, that's it. One drop. That's all you get. Now would be a good time to put the gloves on, isn't it? Yes, it would. Okay. That was one drop of black. And we'll stir it up. That fills it pretty good, so one drop at a time. I was doing, I got up to 40 drops of red at one point, and I think that was insane. All right, we have some plastic down, a little more protection of the bench, so I won't end up with a light red bench. And uh, <clears throat> we got our piece masked off. We've got our black with one single drop in it, of, or our alcohol with one single drop of black in it. And I'm just going to see. See how much I can. I'm not getting a lot of color out of you, though. It's not looking obvious to me. And the alcohol is flashing off pretty quickly. I'm not sure how much we got here. But I just used up about half my alcohol, I think. I'll use it all up then. Not seeing a ton of black, though. So, yeah, that didn't really do much. Part two. Number two has... Three black and one red. That's very red actually. The red goes a long way it looks like. Okay. 
her. So that's got some red to it now. Just leave that like that. And uh, so there's your difference. You got some, it's definitely red toned black now. Okay. I'm gonna let that one dry. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave the amount of red in there and I'm gonna go with more black for the second, for the fourth, third and fourth. I'm gonna go, we'll just add black now. Now is a good time for a controlled sanding, so I can see just uh, just what differences are made here. Um, because I don't, I don't sense, I don't see much point in blindly throwing color on all of them and then using up my samples. So, I'm so gonna, yeah, let's do it by hand. All right, bring you back. This is boring. All right, I've got a sanding block with some 150 grit in it and I'm just going to do it by hand because it's not that difficult and it's a small space. So. The question becomes how much to sand back and my answer is I don't know but I think much of it, most of it should go away. We're leaving some light spots here. And I'm just trying to uh, <coughs> make sure I sand into lighter spots. I do feel like the last time I did sand too much. So I'm going to leave more than I did last time. Oddly enough, I think the first coating with the uh, two bits of black or three drops of black, was it? Yeah, three drops of black. For the moment, <clears throat> I think that one's winning. It was laid on thinly enough that it doesn't look all that grungy now. Yeah, I think I like that better. Okay. So now, I think that one will be ready to get some red on it. <clears throat> and I think I need to figure out what my red is next then. Okay, so now I think we're ready to try to find our red. This is gonna take a lot more, I think, because what's under it is probably subtle and less uh, oh, dramatic, is probably the word I wanna use. It's definitely not uh, ignorable, but it's not a, it's not as visible. It's not the first thing you see, so. Getting the right tone of red is going to be a little nuance. And we have to use our imagination until I get top coats on it. And that's why we take copious notes. Finding the red is gonna be the biggest uh, trial and error part, I think. So I'm gonna start, I've, I've already, I already know that regular old cherry red, just plain old bright red is not what I want. But I'm going to start there one drop at a time and just get a sense of how full, how opaque, how filling that red is. I'm going to start with 
I think we've assumed that one drop is not enough to begin with. So I'm going to start with three. Should I start with three? Let's start with three. One, two, three. Huh? Now I'm going to take that and I think, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and put it on here. Because it needs to be red. It does not need to be opaque. And this would definitely not be opaque. <clears throat> but it needs to be unmistakably red. Alright. I think that's going to be a little too much. Too, a little too primary red. I'm going to put a little on my... On my towel here. Yeah, it's just a tinge of red, though. Not sure that's going to be enough. Yeah, we'll do it. Let's try it. This is three drops of red. I'll make a note before I forget. I think this is where things will start to get... Not tedious, but particular. What I'd like to do, I think I will, is I'm going to smudge a little of everything onto the, onto a chunk. Onto what? I have a, I have that veneer laying around. I can try that. Okay. So this isn't isn't really doing much other than letting me know what each of these colors actually is. So that's what I will do. Yeah. Let me grab another paper towel. And I'm just going to smudge on a, a bit of each, just so I get at least some sense of what the color actually might be. Sample board is had. What am I doing to make that red less pinky? Let's add a little I think I want a drop of honey amber. That'll dial the red back. It'll make it a little bit orangey. Let's try a, a drop of honey amber first. One drop of honey amber. Stuff. I'm going to do one more thing of figured stuff and it's going to be out there crazy shit. I'm going to do a blue one, I'm going to do a green one, and I'm going to do a brown mahogany. Blue, green, brown mahogany, and, and maybe the honey amber. Okay, it's the next day. Welcome back. Um, I'm gonna start by sanding. I'm gonna turn on my dust, dust breather air cleaner. Hi. Megan. Uh, you wanna know? Okay. 
So, we have our dyed samples here, dry. And I'm just gonna sand them back with some 150 still. Almost feel like, oh man. The lazy part of me wants to power sand this, but it's probably smarter if I don't. So this is the black, this was the first one. 100% um, black, it's just three drops of black. This is three drops with one drop of red, three drops of black, one drop of red. So 25% red, 75% black. This is 20% red, 80% black. I just added another drop of black to it. So this one's got promise because there's, there's a lot of little light zones. Um, they All three seem to have somewhat of a promise. This one's a little grungy looking. This one is the blue and the green. The blue looks very promising, if a bit dark in the area, some areas. It's still pretty promising looking. The green looks interesting too. And then this is the, the honey amber, which I think is going to be way too subtle. And this is the uh, reddish brown, which I may have just had a bad side of the wood. It's, it's in there. You can see it. I'll, I'll, have, I'll be able to, ch to tell, but it's a little bit it's a little too subtle. It might not be deep enough. So we'll do these. Got those ready. The reds, so this started out as 100% red, just three drops of red in an ounce. Then I added a drop of honey amber for this one. Or sorry, 100% red, drop of honey amber. So it oranged it up just a little bit. So that's 25% honey amber, 75% red. Then over here we did to this same one we added a drop of reddish brown to number three. So it is this one with a little bit of reddish brown in it. So it's not super obvious. It did a little browning to it, not too much. And then in this one I added a drop of reddish brown and I think it's, it's of these, it's the most likely though it's a little dingy, but you can't really tell until there's a top coat. Um, then this one was the second round, and these have the most promising. So this is 75% red, 25% reddish brown. So it's basically like this one was without the honey amber in it. And that actually looks a little more reddish to me. I like that. Um, and then this is the same with one more red. So it's 20% reddish brown, 80% red. Then over here, it's... Uh, it's four red, two reddish brown. So that's out of six. So it's two sixth. Yeah, it's a third reddish brown and two thirds red. And then this one, I added a yellow to it. And I act. Oh no, sorry. This one is the reddish brown. One. This one I added yellow, and it's a little bit orangey. Um, I had one drop of yellow. So it's four drops of red, three drops of. Or excuse me, four drops of red, two drops of reddish brown, one drop of yellow. Um, so it is fairly close to that one with a yellow instead of a, a honey amber. Um, and it does have a little more vibrance to it. These feel like they're getting really close, and so I don't want to use up all my sample stock. I want to put a top coat on these and see if they meet what I want. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to mix up, um, I'm not going to mix up. I'm going to just shoot on a little bit of lacquer. Yeah, I think I'll shoot on just a little bit of lacquer to get a coat on here. Um, because Messy. Put a little bit of lacquer, because I'm going to be putting lacquer on as my final finish. I might as well be normal. Changing my mind about the shellac. At least with this round, I might still use shellac as the first coat. I'm not entirely certain just yet. but So yeah, we're going to uh, get ourselves configured in such a way that allows me to put down top coats. And 
I've got the I just got spray cans of it here, so yeah, we'll just lay down a a couple of coats of lacquer. Lacquer. Um, and I gotta figure out how I'm gonna hold it so I can do that. So I'll be back. Bring you back. All right, I've got my two sample boards hanging, and uh, we're gonna spray a little lacquer on them. This is just that Balin top coat lacquer gloss. I don't have any sanding sealer, so this will just have to do for a, an approximation. I just want to get a top coat on it and see what the top coat's going to look like. I think that's safe enough of an experiment. Um, so it's just a spray can. And we're ready to, ready to do this. I think we're going to hold it like this. And just lay on a light coat to begin with. I've got doors open and stuff, by the way, so no worries of health concerns here at the moment. All the air is going out that direction. Yeah, that's just a ceiling coat for now. on pretty thick that time, but that's okay. Yeah, that one's... I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit and then I'll come back and put another coat down. We'll let that dry. And uh, I'm going to do some sanding after that. I'll do a light skim sand. 